Hello and welcome to Nompton Numismatics. This is uh, another video going through some of the coins in my collection and I'm just going to kind of give some background on their history and a little bit about the coins. Thanks for watching. So the first coin here is a 1908 Austria 5 Corona and it is 24 grams of 90% silver, has a diameter of 36 millimeters. The mintage on this one is a very precise 3,941,600. That sounds like a lot, but they're still pretty tough to find in this condition. It is probably worth about $350 or so in Mint State 64. Tough to find a ton of comps because they don't sell that frequently uh, in this kind of grade, or you just don't see them that frequently. It commemorates the 60th anniversary of the reign of Franz Joseph I. He became emperor at the age of 18 in 1848 and ruled until his death in 1916. The obverse reads, I'm just going to put this on the screen. That's what it reads. But it translates to Franz Joseph I, by the grace of God, Emperor of Austria, King of Bohemia, Gallica, Illyria, and so forth, and Apostolic King of Hungary. And then the uh, reverse features the allegory of fame running with an olive branch in hand with the denomination to the left here and then the uh, Austro-Hungarian eagle to the right. And it reads, and I'm just going to display it on the screen again, that's what it says. 1848 and 1908, I do know what that says. But it translates to... 12 lustra, lustra of glorious achievements, and lustra is the plural form of lustrum, which is a period of five years that derives from ancient Roman history. A lustration was originally an animal sacrifice for purification offered by one of the censors in the name of the Roman people at the close of the taking of the census. These censuses were taken at five-year intervals, thus a lustrum came to refer to the five-year intercensus period. The first lustrum was performed in 566 BC by King Servius VI, King of Rome. I went off on a little tangent here, but that just goes to show kind of some of the cool rabbit holes of history you can go down when you're trying to kind of track down the history of a coin. So I really like that piece and happy to have it. This next one is a 1331 to 1371 Bulgaria Grosh. And it is uh, mint state 65. It is 1.61 grams of silver. I'm not sure the purity. And is roughly 21 millimeters in diameter. It was minted in the Second Bulgarian Empire, which existed from 1185 to 1396. 65 is top pot for the type, one of three in 65, and is also top pot for all Bulgarian Grosh types at NGC. And there are four different types from between 1300 and 1397. The last NGC graded sale for the or for a type like the or for this type, excuse me, was in June of 2020, and it sold for 336 on Heritage Auctions. So this one being a top pop MS65, and with the increase in the coin market overall, probably put the value somewhere around 500 on this piece. And that is a great price because I purchased this one raw on eBay for like $70, I think, uh, listed as XF. But I knew it was much better than that from the pictures. And as soon as I got it in hand, I was like, oh yeah, this is a very nice mint state. The obverse features Tsar Emperor Ivan Alexander and his son Michael. Ivan ruled from 1331 to his death until 1371. And so with these being undated coins, that's where the date range comes from, because they were minted throughout his life. The reverse here depicts Jesus Christ standing before a throne. And I also had uh, photo visions done of this one that I'm super happy with. They did a really good job capturing the toning on this one. Um, that's kind of subtle, but pretty apparent in hand. I'll try and get it on here, but you'll see it on the photo visions that I'll show here. Very happy with that coin. 
This next one here is an 1827 Nueva Guatemala Mint Central American Republic 8 Reales AU55. Very happy with this one. It is roughly 27.07 grams of 9027 silver or 90.27 silver. Unknown mintage on this one, and the diameter is uh, 30 millimeters, although I think this one's a little bit smaller, uh, I think, whenever they struck it, but it, it should weigh the same. It's still pretty hefty. The Central American Republic consisted of present-day Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, and the southern Mexican state of Chiapas. And it existed from 1823 to 1841. Civil wars broke out in the region, and it was incredibly unstable. The first country to leave was Nicaragua in 1838, followed shortly after um, was the were, were the Honduras and Costa Rica. The Union officially ended upon the last country, El Salvador's, proclamation of an independent republic in 1841. The obverse here depicts five volcanoes of the Central American volcanic arc, a chain of volcanoes on the Pacific coast of Central America from southern Mexico to Panama, with that little sun face motif behind it there. And then the reverse here depicts a ceiba tree and the legend uh, free grows fertile. That's what that means. The coin, this one is worth uh, somewhere around about a thousand dollars or so, give or take. The market on these is really strong right now. This has always been a really popular type, but with the increase in values of coins, obviously the most popular types kind of see that increase the most, and this is definitely no exception there. And then this last one is the rarest of the bunch and is a really cool piece that you don't see very often. And probably for a lot of you, it may be the first time you've ever seen one. So this is a 1929 silver Czechoslovakia 10 Ducatu or 10 Ducats. And it is, there's an interesting story on this one, but it is 30.05 grams of 98.7% silver. And it is a 40 millimeter diameter. Just a very cool crown size coin with some great color. I'm actually gonna have this one sent in for photo visions and a reholder because it's kind of scratched up. And then I think I'll also probably send it to Wings for, to see if it might get the gold sticker because I think it has a chance. There were only 3,259 of this coin minted, so it is exceedingly rare. And it was designed by Odakar Spaniel who was born in 1881 and died in 1955 and was struck at the mint in Krimnica or Krimnitz, commemorating a thousand years of Christianity in Bohemia. Um, at least that's, what no that's what's noted on the slab and is also what the Krauss catalog of unusual world coins says. And I'll put a photo of that page here so you can see what I'm talking about. Through my research, though, I found that the coin may have actually been intended to commemorate the thousandth anniversary of the assassination and death of Wenceslaus I, Duke of Bohemia, or more commonly known as Saint Wenceslaus, and I'm probably saying that wrong. And uh, his younger brother, Boleslaus the Cruel, was involved in his murder and uh, then took over as Duke after his death. And so um, Christianity actually may have been present some hundred years earlier than 929, and so that is also a large reason why I believe it uh, may be the case that this is actually commemorating the assassination. The confusion of it over the design, though, likely comes into the fact that um, the year that he was actually killed, there's some dispute over. It was initially thought to have been 929, but scholars now maintain that it is more likely to have been 935. So apparently that's a hot topic for Czechoslovakian scholars. I don't know. Anyway, that's just from what I was able to find out. Um, and so the date on the coin may have caused some confusion, given the 929 to 1929, over exactly what it was commemorating. But nonetheless, he is the person featured on the coin, so I think it stands to reason that that is uh, what it is commemorating. So I think that is probably the case.
the legend on the coin uh, roughly translates to remember our homeland, a phrase that actually comes from one of the oldest Czech songs, the St. Wenceslaus cor uh, Choral. That's what's on here. And this is a silver version of a gold coin. Um, ducats are always gold coinage, but often silver versions were made as kind of patterns and just collectible pieces. This uh, same design was used for a silver five ducatu, which I'd really like to find, but I've never even been able to find like a picture of one. So I'm not sure if, I'm sure they exist. They're in the cross catalog, which is why I really want one, but uh, I, I have yet to see even a picture of one. So I don't know. Um, but it also, the same design is on a gold ducat, a gold three ducatu, and a gold 10 ducatu. This one is the largest coin to feature this design at uh, 40 millimeters and a little over 30 grams. I also have a 1928 silver five ducatu that's a similar story, you know, silver version of a gold coin. It's also very rare and it's at NGC currently, but uh, I'll show a quick photo of it on here so you know what I'm talking about. And um, hopefully it does well at NGC, we'll see. But, but this is a uh, very rare type, again, uh, with only a little over 3,000 made, and they're very popular, um, and they don't sell very often, so I think they tend to stay in private hands for a, a long time, and they're certainly not inexpensive. Um, the value on this piece is probably right around um, $1,100 or so, perhaps a bit more, but uh, I think that's roughly where it should fall. It's a really, really cool coin, and I think that uh, photo visions will really do it some, some justice. And having it out of such a kind of scratched slab, which is how it was when I got it, but I think that'll also be nice. I've debated just cracking it out and sending it in because I do think it could get a mint state sixty-five. I don't know, so we'll see. That may still be on the table, but TBD. And that concludes my video. I really appreciate you guys watching and I uh, hope you have a great day.